Paying host to their great football friends and neighbours, the Hartlepool supporters. Well, normal service resumed yesterday, though the Quakers' eagerness to renew hostilities proved a little premature. This was the one the Quakers had to come back for, and they might have returned in triumph if John Borthwick hadn't pulled this early chance wide. But it was to be a story of wasted opportunities. For all Darlington's controlled build-up, Hartlepool's more direct approach looked just as threatening. Especially with live wire Joe Allen about, only inches away there. But it was to be a typical piece of Allen quick thinking that swung the game Poole's way. Kevin Smith looks for keeper Mark Prudder, but neither of them kept an eye open for Joe. He's in like a flash before they can blink. Knows how to score Joe, knows how to celebrate. The second half was all Darlington, but finding a way through was a different matter. It was all hands to the pool pump. But Ian Bennyworth's boot came to the rescue when McJanet fired a broadside. It was a real derby battle, but there was certainly nothing vicious intended when Steve Mardenry goes for the spectacular overhead kick. And Ellie connects with knobs full in the face. The defender is left in agony. His teammates flare up. Referee Gary Applin sends Mardenry to a neutral corner. But Keith Knobs is soon on his way to hospital with a broken jaw. Mardenry booked, but it was never deliberate. But Paul's resolve wouldn't crack. David Corner's header was goal-bound till Paul Olsen hooked clear right on the line. Darlington couldn't get any closer, and they didn't. Cyril Knowles comes back for the points. We come here today. I mean, they're on an high. Uh, we've had a bit of an indifferent start. Uh, and we knew it was going to be hard, but we had problems before the kick-off, uh, unawares to people in, in and out on the terraces, that we had players who weren't fit. And... Uh, they were the best side for passing it around, knocking it about. But at the end of the day, we just about putting the ball in the net. And we got that chance and Joe put it away. We created uh, most of the chances in the game. Um, Mark Trudeau really hasn't had a shot to save, as I can remember. Um, it was a mistake that cost us the goal. Uh, we will get over the present little dip that we're having and uh, hopefully start picking up points again. Well, hardly people. York City in yellow took the lead in the first half. Tony Cannum, the scorer. It took until the 68th minute for Darlington to hit back. A powerful header from Gary Gill coming up. The replays at York tonight. Wellington were never in trouble at struggling Lincoln. They were handed the lead on a plate when John Schofield fell down after just three minutes. The man for the job was Gary Gill. No problems. The Quakers' second was a rather confusing affair. Grant Brown and Kevin Smith rise at the near post, but there's doubt as to whether the ball actually crossed the line. Steve Mardenborough's trickery's next. He meant that one two off the defender's legs, of course, but a measured cross finds Lee Ellison. And he says, that's mine all the way. Good go, and it really should have been more. Mardenborough was causing havoc again. A classic clog from substitute Graham Bressington and the Quakers have the chance to finish as they started. Gary Gill goes for the same corner again, as Ian Bowling was ready for it. It's nice to afford the luxury of a penalty miss. This consolation came before the break. Coates were funded teammate John Borthwick to score his first goal this season. The day was very definitely at Feetham's, where Darlington faced second in the table Torquay. This was a perfect chance for the Quakers to further their promotion claims, and they grabbed it with both hands. Just six points from the last six games spurred Darlington boss Brian Little into action. Out went David Cork, and in came teenager Lee Ellison, whose determination paid dividends. He robbed Matthew Elliott, and another blunder in the Torquay defence lets John Borthwick in for the opener. Now agony for Gary Coates with his ex-Newcastle man Wes Saunders goes in knee-high. They fear the worst and call for a stretcher. But his leg's not broken and he's carried off to have further tests. The Quakers' second came four minutes after the break. The great build-up starts with Ellison out on the left and ends with Andy Toman right in front of goal. The once mighty Torquay looked well and truly humbled and definitely travel sick. Darlington was strolling through them at the finish. It's the 82nd minute and Drew Coverdale makes the final score 3-0.
promotion race, Darlington and Hartlepool have been neck and neck recently. But they faced entirely different games yesterday and produced the results to match. On paper anyway, the Quakers certainly had the less demanding prospect of third bottom Chesterfield at home. They made it count, eventually. Chesterfield hadn't won away all season, but they certainly made it difficult for Darlington. In fact, they should have scored with the only real chance in a dull first half. John Ryan hesitated when he should have shot with Mark Cutter beaten and Mick Tate cleared the danger. Straight after the break, Darlington at last threatened to break through. Drew Coverdale persisted down the left and set up an almighty scramble in the Chesterfield penalty area. It was Andy Toman who found room for the shot and keeper Mick Leonard was pleased to fumble it away for a corner. Brian Little brought on Steve Mardenborough for Frank Gray and it was his header that set up a golden chance for the recalled David Cork. His shot, however, popped over the bar and no champagne finish this time for the man who's already scored six times this season. The winning goal, though, was a masterpiece. Gary Gill started the move with a ball to Toman. The midfield man went past defenders with ease and found non-stop Gill with a peach of a pass. The finish was perfection, enough to give Darlington the points and keep them well in the hunt for the fourth division title. We're delighted with that. We, we set a... Uh, and, and aim for ourselves this season to try and stay in the top eight, to try and keep the, the local people happy and, and uh, excited about the way the football clubs. We've come a long way in the last 12 months. Um, if we can stay in that top eight, we'll be in the, the playoffs. Uh, it's, it's very early to start talking about promotion itself. We keep our feet on the ground. We've had one or two problems over the last couple of years. We've, we've seen life outside of the football league and, and whilst it was good to us the 12 months we were there but it, it's something that we don't really want to happen to Darlington Football Club again and because of that we're all tremendously motivated to, to do well. Nothing wrong with Darlington's fortunes at Feetham's though, they're just two points from the top of the fourth division after another emphatic victory. Appalling conditions at Darlington where the home side had to survive some early pressure from Len Ashurst's Cardiff City but it all changed on the quarter hour when David Cork set up Les McJanet for his third goal this season. And now the New Year party really could get underway. The second goal was a great solo effort by Cork himself. The back in favour striker cleverly chipped goalkeeper Roger Hansbury to take his personal tally to seven. Just before half time, the weather worked the Quakers' way. Goalkeeper Mark Prudhoe's kick was helped by the gale to Jim Willis. And the big defender got there to score his first since coming back from injury. Who says it's an ill win? Straight after the break, Cardiff survived a superb move engineered by Cork. John Borfett looked a certain scorer, but Jason Perry scrambled the wall off the line, then Hansbury blocked Cork's follow-up. With the water level reaching flood alert, Darlington torpedoed the Welsh side with a fourth. Mick Tate with the easy tap-in from Borthwick's header. To their credit, Cardiff came back. First of all, Prudder fumbled Taylor's shot, and then, somehow, Andy Toman got back to keep out what looked a certain goal. Cardiff's consolation came when Chris Pike glided down the left, got around Tate and found Cohen Griffiths. 4-1 the final score though, and an impressive performance by Brian Little's mostly black and white army. Well, if I dare say it. Um, and the league season may still have four and a half months to run, but in Darlington they're entitled to celebrate already. Yesterday the Quakers took over at the top of Division 4, and no matter what else happens this year, that top spot represents an amazing achievement for a club that dropped out of the league just 20 months ago. The last time Carlisle played at Darlington in May 88, they won 3-0 and doomed the Quakers to the football conference. Yesterday, they tried to confuse the home side by fielding two men in number six shirts. It seemed to amuse referee John Key, even though they'd been playing for three minutes. Mind you, Carlisle could have done with the extra man as Darlington tore into the gale and opened up the defence. John Borthwick had loads of room and his header hit the woodwork. With 21 minutes gone, though, Borthwick laid on the opener. He found Drew Coverdale in oceans of space on the left. The youngsters finished perfection. Now, the Quakers seemed to love the mud. After scoring four on New Year's Day, they were in the mood. And when Lineker's back heel found Gary Gill, it was the woodwork again that denied Darlington. Carlisle, too, hit the post. The original number six, Paul Fitzpatrick, forced a rare error from goalkeeper Prudder. Just eight minutes after the break, Darlington put a foot on the league's top spot when Toman worked the space and Bill Lineker, playing his first full game of the season, scored with a spectacular shot. 
Kevin Smith, the skipper, also made his bid to join the Darlington Gold Show. His diving header flashes wide. Still, Brian Little's men mastered the conditions with flowing football. Gill this time created an opening with a clever one-two with Lineker, but again, his shot hit the post. Heartbreaking stuff. It was the spur for Carlisle to hit back. Rob Edwards' weak cross was only half clear by Smith. Former Celtic player Tommy Shepard picked up the loose ball. Suddenly, Darlington weren't coasting anymore. But the Scott did too much talking for referee John Keyes like it. He said something untoward off the ball, just like Gaza, the red card. Carlisle's comeback was over, and in the dying seconds of the match, Toman again the provider for an easy goal by Smith to compensate for his earlier error. Joy for the Featons faithful, and a sweet moment for Smith from the boss, Brian Little. So there it is, confirmation of Darlington standing proudly at the top of Division 4. Hartlepool United, without a match yesterday, are still in the hunt with games in hand. But the day yesterday belonged to the born-again Quakers. Well, it, it's a good feeling, yes. Um, you know, we've come a long way in 12 or 15 months and happy to be where we are. Um, but still keeping our feet firmly on the ground and being very level-headed about it. Uh, I suppose we're there to be shot at a little bit now. And, uh, you know, it might spur one or two teams on to do especially well against us. But we've got to be able to handle that. Um, the conditions have been terrible and yet the boys have, have done really well. They've got the bit between their teeth and they really, really are motivated at the moment. It's, it's a great feeling. Um, as I say, the, the difficult part is maintaining it. But uh, we're going to try our very best.